Well, good morning, everyone. This is Carolyn from Known as Nutty Crafts, and I decided I wanted to go live, but making a wreath with you. I thought I got all this stuff out of the way. I guess I didn't. Yeesh. So my table's clear, because you know what's going to happen. Things are going to go flying. Hope they stay. So... I have been busy the last couple of days, like all of us. Everybody was taking down decorations and stuff. Um, I didn't send out a notification. This is just a pop-on. And um, I've been making some wreaths really quick because, you know, Valentine's Day is here. And it's just like, oh, my gosh. So let's get going. Hello, hello. Thanks for coming in. So... What we're going to do today, we're going to make this sign, not the sign, but this one. It says, Happy Mom's Day. Thank you for, uh, thank you. Best mom. Love you. I'm not sure if it's coming back backwards to you because I have the phone facing me so I can see comments. Oh, thank you for sprinkles. Yes, please sprinkle. I want to, I would like to hit 10,000 people on Facebook. And I'm at 5,700 and something people. <laughs> So I got a ways to go, but it's a goal for this year. So I started doing this, and this is why I said, ah, just go live. So Dollar Tree, or you can use Walmart, whoever wreath base you want to get. I put 12 ties in, six on the inside, six on the outside. Now, the reason why I picked this one to do is because last night I was working on a wreath, and I used this, and I pulled it out of the wreath because I didn't like it. So these colors go perfect. So I said, I got to get this into something because it's all over my floor. So I said, perfect sign, perfect time to do the wreath. And uh, the sign goes really pretty. This is a bow I had made. I have like, God knows how many bows that I make and I put them, you know, you put them for sale and they may not sell right away, or it was on a different project and you take it off. Ha Hello. Yes, we are Mr. D. <laughs> we are. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to make. I may take out this plaid one, this gingham run rather when I do it. Um, so we shall see. All right, so I started with eight inch poofs on the inside. This is 21 inch mesh. It's mesh that I had. I hope I have enough because if not, I'm going to use two different colors. Why not? Why not? Hello, Miss Kirsty. How are you? So we're measuring this at, what did I say? Eight inches. I had it mapped out on one thing. And we're just making poofs on the beginning. And that's what we're going to start off with. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming in. I didn't send out, like I said, I didn't send out a notification. I just said, I'm just going to come on. I missed you guys. Christmas came, New Year's came, Thanksgiving came. Oh, it was a crazy time for everybody. Everybody's probably getting all their decorations down. I got mine down on the 30th, 31st. I took them down. All my family left that day. So I said, you know what? It was a nice day. Let's get the outdoor decorations down. We did that. I pulled all the indoor decorations to one room. And the next day, we put all the indoor. The tree came down. And it was sad because my house looks naked now. Naked. Naked, naked, naked. I know I'm not going to have enough of this one. But I'm going to be having a video come out. Hello. And on that video, it's going to tell you... Some things I had worked so hard on doing in my craft room. Because we're all right now trying to get all the Christmas stuff we bought on sale. and Or any other holiday. And you got it all over your room. And you got to get it organized. So I have a video that's coming out that will um, it'll be on my YouTube. Um, it's not out yet. But you will, I will post it in my page when it comes out. I just have to finish up on the little glitches, you know, that you got to do on it. All right. So I literally had enough to go on the inside and don't on the outside of the green. Unless I have another green. Which, let me check my closet. I don't 
have this is the same kind. No, this is later. But I want to do two different colors anyway. So hopefully that one will be enough. Oh, so how is everybody today? Hello. I meant to be doing that right now. Decided I'm going to watch you. <laughs> Hey, you can watch and clean at the same time, you know. I did that with the, you know, I have, you know, you have friends. And as you're cleaning, they could be crafting and you're cleaning. But thank you for watching me instead. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the 10-inch mesh behind me. This one I'm using is 21-inch mesh. So this might be a two-toner, a two-toner. I don't think I'll have enough to go on the outside. No, I'll probably make it about halfway around. Okay, plan B. So what I started with this and doing is, and how I'm gonna end it, I'm gonna put this down here. I'm gonna take a zip tie and I'm gonna zip tie it. I usually leave about an inch from where I'm gonna, from where I, tied it off with the pipe cleaner pull it really tight I do it on a single rail not on the double rails of this sorry that always bangs so loud isn't that crazy 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 and then I cut about an inch or so off here oops now if this was mesh I was still using, look how jankity that comes off. Now, Melly Mel had a good little tip. When she would cut hers, she would, now as she cut it, now I'm going to just hold this here. She would cut it and hold it right there and put a rubber band on it because it looks pretty much even when you cut it. But if you actually open it up, it's not even. So rather than use this again, you know, try to use it again and you got to, you know, um, take your rotary color to make it even, she does that, which I think is a really good idea. I really do. Kudos, Miss Melly Mel. I do watch videos of other people. All right. So we're going to bring in, where's my sign? This green matches and this one would go too. I'm going to put this underneath here so you don't have all the rattling. So we're going to do a two-toner. A two-toner. I love getting rid of stuff. My husband would probably love it even more. <laughs> and of course, I didn't follow Melly Mel's rule on that because it was a rule I found out after the fact. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, everybody. If you're new, please, you know, do those um, like, follow, share, sprinkle, bless, all that. Um, I would appreciate that. There we go. So now where I left off, I could have taken this and done it in there, but I'm just going to start over here at the first zip tie. First zip tie. First. Um, oh my God, I don't have my words. <laughs> my first <laughs> pipe cleaner. There we go. And I'm going to zip tie this end here. As well, I'm going to pull out two because I'm going to have to end it. And we'll put it on the outside rail on this one. Actually, I'm going to put it on the inside rail. I like to keep some of my messy things out of the way so that um, people don't see the mess. And like because this is on the outside, so when I put my zip tie in, I put this towards the inside. So when I cut it, um, it's on the inside, if that makes sense. See, just like this. So it's facing the inside of the wreath. Just so nobody cuts their fingers or gets tagged on it. And that's why. So I did that. Cut it off. Trim it off a little bit. To make it look pretty. And there we go. Now, the inside curls I did, uh, and I'm not going to have enough of this one. Oh, round two. I got more. I have more of this one. I think it's the same. Is it the same? No, it's not. 
OMG. Okay. Wow, Carolyn, you're moving really swift today. This is what happens in Nona's Nutty Crafts. <laughs> uh, let me just cut that zip tie off. Okay, I gotta get something a little sharper in there because I can't weasel that in there. I have pliers. Look, I got some pink pliers for Christmas. Whew. There we go. I was hoping it would be enough, but evidently not. This definitely has enough on it. Definitely has enough. Hey, that's why we have so much mesh and stuff in our in our rooms because we can always we can ad lib, change it up, and there we go. And I'm not worried about that being all janky because I'm going to cut it off anyway. Just make sure I got it all through so everything is caught and we're good to go. Just make sure I didn't miss any comments. Those of y'all that are watching, thank you for coming in. Come in and hang out. You pulled all your... <laughs> That's good, Kirsty. It's a start. Hello, Miss Janet. How are you, everybody? The touch is on. <laughs> the, 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 the Duchess is fine, y'all. <laughs> my friends from across the pond they called me the Duchess. <laughs> Whoops, I gotta put my zip tie on. Zip tie this first. Bring it up in there. And I'm using, like I said, the second rail in, not the out outside rail. Why not? Oh gosh, you missed it last night. I was crafting last night by myself in the wee hours of the night. I probably should just go live when I do that. And it was, even though it's cold outside, it got a little hot in here. So I put the fan on. Now those of you, <laughs> some of my friends know before, I had the fan on when I had things over here and I took a wreath off and the wreath hooked onto the fan and I broke the, I don't know, the, the thing, whatever you call it, the blade. So last night I was taking some boxes off because I had shifted everything, taking some boxes off on the other side and I hit the blade. I didn't break it, thank the Lord. But the, the sound, the sound. So anyway, is my volume up enough? There we go. I just realized it might have not been up enough. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So look, at it's pretty as two town. Oh, this could be a St. Patrick's Day wreath. Oh, no, look at that. I just realized the colors. Oh, I like these colors for your St. Where's my thing? For St. Patrick's Day. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> Guys, we may just switch it up again. Now, I'm doing these poofs at 10 inches. I did 8 inches on the inside, 10 inches on the outside. You could do 12 if you want to. I'm just doing 10. I was keeping this one kind of small. I have two in my shop. I do have two, um, I'm going to call them big St. Patrick's Day wreaths in there. Um, not huge. They're probably 22, maybe 24 um, in my shop. So if you want those, be more than happy to oblige to send them to you. But this one, I wanted to make it just a little bit smaller. I it was going to turn out to be the Mother's Day. It may be a St. Patrick's Day one. Why not? I do have an order for one. And this might be right up that lady's alley. Uh, uh, there we go. And we're going to come around to the end. The last one. 
and voila. I do like these colors together. Who knew? Of course, the pink that I have that I was going to use won't go. But that's okay. We ad lib. Got a little string here from one of these. And I'm going to end it. This is going to be perfect because this is at the end of this row too. So I'm going to pull it on the inside again. Take my handy dandy zip tie. Hello. I have some new faces here, which is yay. I have some of my other regulars here, which is yay. So welcome, 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 everybody. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And we'll cut this off. Now I'm going to do that Melly Mel thing. I'm actually I'm going to show you how it's done. These are those little white, those little itty bitty 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 um, ties. Rubber bands, rather. So see, it looks so nice and even. But if I were to pull this apart, it'd be all janky. So I'm going to just do this. And this is what I was saying to do. So that, whoop, I broke that rubber band. Um, so when you're ready to go, you already have it like this. And you can just use your pipe, um, your zip tie to uh, zip tie. Or if you want to use pipe cleaner, you can too. And it stays. Voila. I always keep a lot of those little rubber bands on hand. <laughs> okay. All right, so since we're changing this up, we got to come up with... Oh, it's still a pretty... Oh, I could still do this with this. Ooh. I think it will still work. I think it will. I think it will. So, got to poof it out. Why not? Because that's what we need to do to make it look pretty. How did you guys fare? There's uh, one storm that came up the East Coast. It came up from Texas through Louisiana and everything. We just got rain where I am in Virginia. No snow. I was very bummed about that because I wanted snow. I like the snow. It's cold, but I like the snow. So I'm just pulling the ends of this out to make it poofy. This is going to be a cute little room. We could still do this with this, but it'd be a cute combination for St. Patrick's Day. Ooh, 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 ooh. See what happens. I always, when I do these things, I never commit. You know, because in design, sometimes as you're doing it, it all of a sudden says, hey, do me this way. And I'm like, okay. And I just change it up as I go sometimes. And it all works its way out. Where's this one? Oh, it goes this way. There we go. And again, this is not going to be a huge one. that twist tie out. That tells me I didn't twist tie it or not. Please. Two inches of snow. Wow. Oh gosh, I know. Maine, Boston, all them. Do I have dogs? Yeah. <laughs> Why is it well, every time you get on a live, your dog, your cat, your kid decides, hey, we're going to go crazy just because you're running live. And it's like, thank you guys. All right, I'm going to stick with the, my original plan with this sign. I do like it with the two tones in there. I think that will look pretty. And then, of course, I'm adding the pink. These I had, like I said, I had used them on, um, I was going to use them on a wreath I was making last night. And then cut them all, put them all in there and didn't like it. So for me, I want to use it before it gets demolished all on my floor here. All right, so I like to make my ruffles. I like to fold them in half. Oh, 
excuse me, overlap them a little bit and then crinkle them up. Make a little bow tie. And these are gonna go vertical on the ones out here. And what I mean by vertical, that way. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. Start on the outside. Now, as you're doing this, if you have your ribbon cut, which I don't, so we're gonna do all that together. Um, you can go ahead and put your ties in so it's like one and done. But since I decided to do this and said, oh, I have all my mesh, I'll do the mesh and then I'll figure out the bow. But I have the bow already made so I can just pull up the, the ribbons from that. I'm looking to see where I have the ribbons because when I redid this whole room, Things got put everywhere and reorganized, and it's like, oh. But if not, we can make a whole different bowl. Ooh, this is gonna look pretty. It's nice colors for the spring, spring, summer. And a mom can have this up all the time because every day is a Mother's Day. In my book. Moms do a lot. They put themselves last. <laughs> so again, these are cut at 20 inches. And I fold them in half, just like this. And then I scrunch them up. And the side where it would be open, where I overlap, is the side I put kind of like face down, so to speak. That's what I do. You could have it facing up if you want. I like it facing down. No rule. Thank you. They are pretty colors. They're nice for the spring, summertime. Because I know a lot of people are like, I'm done with Christmas. Time to move on. I'm already planning shows for the spring. I'm in two already. Hopefully we'll get into the third one. I think that's gonna be it for me for the spring. And then we'll move on through the summer. You know, you got vacation, going to see kid, my grandkids and stuff and do whatever. I'm gonna do the same with this one. It's gonna be vertical as well. So this one kind of covers over the green leaves a little bit. So see how it overlaps? Oops, oh, I've got to tuck those in. So these are the ones I did going up and down. So as I do it, these are going to be the same way. So it kind of overlaps a little bit on that, which is 100% fine. And I'm going to tuck all this inside so I don't get them all caught on everything. And of course, it's cold and I want to wear a sweater. And the sweater is the worst thing you can wear when you're working with mesh. <laughs> should get it all over the place. Yes, they are pretty colors. And I'm doing this old school um, on here, you know, on my phone. Why? Because I was listening to music and I said, you know, let's just go have fun. So rather than getting the cold computer and everything all set up, I just said, ah, we'll just go live. I'm an impromptu person like that sometimes. I just like to say, hey, let's just go for it. Oopsie. And wing it out of the park. So I may have to cut one more of these. I think I have 11 of these cut and I need 12 technically. So how many of you do craft shows? Are you getting ready for them? Last year, I did 11. The years in the past, I used to do between six and eight, but last year I decided to do a bunch in the spring. I did five in the spring and then six in the fall, you know, Christmas and all. Oh, I have exactly 12, yay. Um, and I was a lot. <laughs> 
I felt like I was go, 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 go. And when I do it, for me, um, I bring up, my stuff is down on the first floor in a storage place in our, in our house. I don't have a storage unit anywhere. Everything either fits in my room here. My, well, my bows hang in the other room and I do use the other closet for storage for some totes. Um, but I have all my wreaths hanging on garment racks in on our first floor in the storage room and they're all, you know, with bags on them and everything. And I have three racks that I use right now. And so I already pushed the one to the back, which had like Halloween, they're double high. And it has like, you know, fall, Halloween and Christmas, what's left on it. The one in the center may have feeding of some of that over it. The one that's in the front or closest to me is all the spring, summer, you know, kind of stuff, as well as the middle one may feed. The middle one gets a little both. Um, so it's kind of, you know, one of those things. Oh, look, this does look really pretty with that. I love the two tones. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Let's put you over there. Let me get this off. Up here. Looks like a little ponytail on there. Now, this is a bow I already had made. And now that I put that fuchsia in there, I don't like to use it. You can make this an Easter one too, if you want. So, Let's pick out some bows. These are our colors. It's kind of like a fuchsia pink, a mauvey pink, the green, and of course white and black. So how do we want to do this? Kind of reminds me of polka dots around the edge. So I could do that. I really wish I had enough of this ribbon because this would look kind of pretty, but I don't. I keep my scrap pieces because if I just need a touch of it for a bow, then I use it. So let's see. I could use that. Ooh, I got some Swiss dot polka dots that we can use. What was my best seller? Hmm. Now, if you're talking Christmas time, I think my best seller which we all say not to make, was Mr. Grinch. He was my best seller. I sold a lot of him. Cardinals were my best seller as well. Um, Halloween, it kind of was like all over the board on that. Um, I sold some witchy things, some um, ghost um, things for fall. Um what I sold mostly in fall was like wreaths that had the colors in it. Um, I didn't sell any floral ones, but they were all mesh ones um, is what I sold. Now, what have I sold since? Um, I actually sold just this year already. I sold, uh, it was just, a, a, what do you call it? A grapevine with a lot of green and they kind of like off-white, white, white um, hydrangeas on it just big hydrangeas on it with a pretty bow um that sold what was the other thing i was oh my gosh i hate that when i do that mm. so now i've been making valentines i had some small valentines so i've made four valentines wreaths um Two were listed in my shop. The other two, I one I made yesterday and the uh, last night and the other one the night before, and I haven't gotten it listed yet. That's my Judy today. Um, this is Mother's Day. I'm going to be making a lot of um, just like home sweet home things because a lot of people like those, you know, all year. Oh, I keep freezing. I, it's not freezing on my end. It shows that I'm still talking. Um. So those are some things that I sold um, off the top of my head. And yeah, snowflake, um, ginger. Oh, a lot of nutcrackers I sold this year. A lot. I usually don't do nutcrackers. And this year, I, because I made one years ago, and it took a couple of years for it to sell. And it's probably just the design. Because once I revamped it, then it sold. So this year, I went a different design on my nutcrackers. I think my biggest nutcracker was 36 inches long. He was handmade by Crafting Madness, my friend over in the UK. And 
the other ones were like the wooden nutcrackers on there. Um, I did one really big like styrofoam nutcracker that was probably, God, almost three feet tall. And they all sold a lot of gingerbread, a lot of candy things. So um, I'm not complaining, not complaining at all. I was very blessed, very blessed. So we're gonna pull out some different ribbons here that we can use and just see how we wanna use them and go from there. Oh, this became my favorite one last night. I used this one. I don't know where I got it. Isn't that pretty? That was really pretty for Valentine's Day. So I'm looking at all the different colors in here to see what colors can I bring in with whatever ribbons. Oh, that would go really cute. That would go cute. I put a lot of Swiss dots there. I don't know if I use that. So I'm looking at the black, the pink, the green. I'm not gonna use just white. Pink, pink I have up there. Let's go to two and a half inch. Ugh. That one. I could use that one too. All right, let's see what we got here. We got a solid pink. We could do those two together because see how they brings out brings out the black, the green the white and the pink. I'm not a fan of this one that I pulled out, so you go away. I did pull out this one, but now I'm not a fan. Those two are a definite go. I have flower ones over here because this was the Riff Raff drawer. Oh, that's Easter. Wrong drawer. Hold on a second. This is my stool. I need one of, a friend said I need one of those ladders. Like you have, they say in the um, libraries. You know, with the, oops, I just saw one. That might look pretty, I don't know, let's see. Ooh, there's another one that might look pretty. <laughs> Ooh, that would go too. I was trying to pull out some pink flowers. Okay. I do like this one. It brings in a little bit of yellow. Because it's like a yellow green on there. Oh, my end is sorry. No problem. No problem. Sometimes if it freezes, go out and you come back in and then you're fine. I think I'm going to use that one. I have flowers up there, but they're not pink. They're white. I don't have any pink flowers, but that's okay. I like this one. I do like these two together. Oh, I could do these two together, too. <gasps> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Catch a tiger by the toe. I think I'm going to do my tails in this. You could do two separate types of tails. They don't have to all be the same, same. You can alternate them if you want to. I think I want to keep them the same on this one. I could bring some of that in in the bow. And the same with your bow. It doesn't have to be the same old, same old. I do like these two together. Because this has that lime green. Even though it has a pop of yellow in there, I think it's pretty. I hope I don't have one already open. I always hate that. I open up a brand new one, and then I look, and I already had one open. And it's like, man, man. Let's put that over there. All right, so we're going to slide these on here. Stay up there. My pin cushion. And I think we're going to cut these. I don't know. Lately, I've been into 14 inches, 13, 14 inches. Ooh, big decision. You guys tell me, cut it at 13 or 14 inches? 
What should I do? Oopsie. Pipe cleaner out of the way. I do like this combo together. See, that would be the combo and the tails. Pretty. Okay. So 10. How about 13? I think 13's the winner. I think we'll do 13. Why not? Why not? So I do have my perfect tails that I could use. <laughs> Sometimes I like to do things just a little bit on the old school side and just do it. And I'm cutting. Let me turn you this way so you can see what I'm doing. So I have these up on the mesh roller from Susie's recent things. And I don't have it threaded through here, but I'm layering them on top of each other. And I'm just pulling it out and I'm just cutting it together. So one, two, three, four, five. So I have five cuts so far. Now, I have 12 ties in there, but I'm not going to cut 12 of these. I usually cut it one shy of, um, so that's six, this is seven, eight, I'll turn you back this way because that's boring watching me cut. And we're going to do nine. So, I'm going to start with these. Reason being that I'm not sure where the sign's going to go if I want to put it in the middle or off to the side. Um, so, if I do all my tails on the outside first, then I could decide where I want to put the sign. If I want to off-center it, put a bow off to the side of it or not, we shall see. We shall see. So let's cut all our tails up. And usually I'll do these and have these already made, you know, before I come on live. But I like to sometimes just go with the flow. Just go with the flow. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. I enjoy seeing some new faces and all on here. It's always nice. It's a new year. It's a new year, everybody. New year. And if you have any questions, just ask away. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have on everything. So I'm dovetailing these. So it looks like a letter V. I used to say ducktailing <laughs> when I first started out years ago. I called it ducktailing, and somebody says it's dovetailing, and I was like, "Huh? Does a dove have a pointy tail like this? I guess a duck doesn't." <laughs> so I was like, "Oops!" So <laughs> I used to laugh at myself for that because you have to learn somewhere. There we go. There we go. Oops. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Everybody's just getting up, depending where you live. I'm on the East Coast, so been up for a while. And if you're on the West Coast, you're just, well, not just getting up, depending how your day is, or you may be working. And you may be on a lunch break, just popping on to see who's on. Oops. One that's going to be a little short in there. Get in there. Got to get up at the top. There we go. So however many you want to fold in to do your cutting, it's up to you. All right. 
let's get these little chippers in the trash can because I'll have them flying all over in no time. And what I hate is those little pieces of the wire sticking out. Oh, now, when I do a wreath like this sometimes, now most of the time you will put it in the middle. I like to put it off to one side, just like that. And um, a friend of mine, Janet James, taught me this. She started doing it in years ago. And I kind of like it. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. And the reason why I do it is because it shows your bottom ribbon down below. Instead of it being in the middle, it shows it in the middle, you know, when it's in the middle too. But it just sets it more off and makes it easier, in my opinion, when you're flaring your ribbons out. It's already at the top, if that makes sense. So you can get a look like that. Now, if I did it the other way, I'm going to put this one in the middle. And just pinch it along. Now you see the ribbon is set more, whoops, let me hold it up more so you can see it flat. It's more in the middle of the ribbon so you get a little bit on each of the edges of it now you could still flare it out like the same way or you can leave them on top so if you wanted something like that where they're laying on top now to flare them out it takes a just a little bit more to do because it was in the middle of the ribbon but you could do the same thing that I did on that first one. So it's really a choice factor of what you would like, which way you would like to go. I like to do it like I did the first way because they're all up on the same side. And again, if you want these more like in so-called X pattern, you know, opposites or whatever, it depends what you wanna do. So it really is up to you. But for this, this one, I'm gonna put them all on one side I fold them in half, get my crease, and then I just go ahead and ruffle it, crimp, crimp it, whatever you want to call it. Crimp it, crimp it. <laughs> Gosh, my vocabulary. And then I don't have to pull it as much. Let me turn you more this way. So then I don't have to pull it as much to try to separate them. Okay, I didn't realize my thing was out of frame there. I apologize for that. So what's some questions you may have that maybe I could answer? So this is on this particular one style. This is why I had this going up and down because the bow is gonna go across. And that way you'll see more of your mesh, you'll see your green and your ribbon. Oop. There we go. And let's pull that down. And that's all I do on pulling them down just like that. And I give them a little curl back a little bit on it too. If you want them to lay more flat, if you're doing like a pancake method, you can lay them more flat. It's really up to you. But this one's going to be more poofy, so I'm giving them just a little, I just take my fingers and just curl it back a little bit like that. All right, let's get this one going. Put it in there. Give some twisties around. Now, if you're going to add something more to this, little styrofoam balls or deco tubing, you know, you may not want to cut off the edge of your ties until you decide what you're going to do. So since I'm going with the flow on this one, I do have pink little balls I can put in there. Um, you can add a little flower. I don't know if I have the color flower for that. No. Um, 
to put on there on the top, just a flower bud. You could stick flowers in here. You could stick all kinds of things. Just looking to see what I had around. But sometimes I won't stick anything in there and I'm just leaving it just like this, you know, with just the ribbon in there. All right, so we got the whole outside done. So that's what the outside looks like. Wah! So let's do the inside. It's so funny when sometimes you want to go old school with just your camera and, you know, your phone. And I do that every now and then. It reminds me of where I started and all this techno stuff. See, that's what it's going to look like there. I gotta see if I get the two of them in the row for you. So that's what it's going to look like there. Let me pull that one down. I want to make sure that the mesh um, that's in between the two, that I have the one going up and the one that's on the inner rails is going, you know, up and down too. So that that one helps cover the green a little bit as well. This makes a pretty little like flower and I don't think I'm gonna put anything in these so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off and I just twist tie it up a bunch of times and then I just take this and curl it back down now you can leave your pipe cleaner you don't have to cut it you could just wind it wind it wind it and make it almost like a rosebud like a flat rosebud um, which I've done in the past as well. It just depends. If I'm gonna put something on it, whether it's a little styrofoam ball or something, I will sometimes wind it so that it, you know, like just like, you know how you take a ball of yarn, you just wind it and it's flat like a piece of plate. And then I make it flat on here so that um, the styrofoam has something to actually adhere to better. If that makes sense. Hello, welcome, welcome. All right, let's get these cut off. I could still put whatever I want on there. But I think I'm gonna keep this, I don't know. It's pretty the way it is. But I think once we get the bow and everything on it, we can take it from there and add it. Now, you think I'm wasting pipe cleaners? I don't. I save these because I make these angel ornaments. Okay. And with the angel ornaments, I just need a little piece of the pipe cleaner, something so small like that, and it works. So I keep a baggie full of them <laughs> down here <laughs> in my graph room. <laughs> and I make them all different colors. All right. So we got to decide where we're going to put the sign, where we're going to put a bow. I'm going to stand up for this one and I'm going to shoot. We'll, we'll work it together. I want it off to the side. I think I'm going to put it in the middle. Let me show you what. So here it is kind of in the middle. I could do two bows diagonally with it. If I put it off to the side, which is fine, I do am left them with the hole in here. And I kind of, I mean, it's okay, but I kind of don't. I don't want to put it on an angle. I think I'm going to put it in the middle and do two bows. So in doing that, I will need, I got to figure out where my bows are going to go because I may not need to put a pipe cleaner there, um, pipe cleaner, a tail there. So if I have one bow down here, I want to put one up there. That's one, two, three, four. 
You always wish I get corners down here are okay. All right, so it's just one corner. Oh well, I have to cut more. The there, it's not a square wreath; it's a round wreath, so you have to um, go with how the wreath works. <laughs> so in one corner, I can leave without putting tails in there. The other corners, I need it all in. Not corners. Twist ties. This is not a square. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I cracked myself up. I do, I do, I do, I do. All right, so I need two more tails. So let's get those cut. One, two. Yesterday I was mad. I was cutting my ribbon and both of them were spliced. I wanted to show you this one because this one caught me off guard. Look at the hearts. These are facing down. These are facing up. You can see right here where they spliced it. I was so mad. I was like folding my ribbon. I was like, okay, my heart should be facing up. Why aren't any of my hearts facing up? And I had to take it off. It took me a little bit to figure it out. And I went, oh, they spliced it. They didn't even splice the hearts in the same direction. And then there was another one. I don't know if I have it in there. I had another ribbon. They, When they spliced it, they glued it, but they also stapled it. I was like, seriously? So I was like, man... And of course, it's right in the middle. It's not going to be where you can hide it or anything. It, it was just at an awkward part of it. You know, like it would stick out. So it was like, oh, man. So you waste like six inches of ribbon because of that. Ugh. Well, the reason why I couldn't keep that ribbon because... It was going one way, but when they spliced it, it changed directions and everything. It was like, really? <laughs> That's the first time I've seen it doing that bad. But it is what it is. I moved on. Hello, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Come on in, everybody. Say hello. Tell me where you're from. I haven't done that in a while. I did that one year and we were trying to hit all 50 states. And I think we got up to like 30 something states on one of the lives the one time. And I had a bulletin board behind me. And every time a new state came in, we I put a thumbtack in it. And it was just a fun thing to do. Um, God, I should do that again. Because that was fun. We just thought, you know, how many states could we get if we could get all 50 states? I mean, Alaska would probably be the hardest one to get. I don't know. Because, I mean, I had Hawaii. And I had some from overseas, you know, in Ireland and the UK and stuff. Um, but it was hard to get all 50 states. But it was fun to try. Okay, so we got all of these in. So let's go ahead and put our sign in. And get our sign going and then we can make our bows. All right, so now for our sign, our sign doesn't have any holes in them. And I like it better when they don't send the holes. I used to not, and I'm talking years ago, I not have these little fancy dancy little, it's like a jewelry punch. Um, I never had these, so it was like, oh, how am I going to put a hole? And it was taking a hammer. I literally take a hammer and a skewer, and I would like, it was how I used to do it. And then I finally said, okay. I got a pair of these, and I was like, where was I all these years? <laughs> really, really, where was I? 
Let me put my little thingamajigs up to the side. All right. So I know I'm going to have one down in this corner. I could do this diagonally. I don't want to do it in the middle because I don't want to have this happen. But if I do it diagonally, it should hold it, you know, where it's not going to teeter-totter. It's not, it doesn't rotate on an angle like this. But if you just do it two sides like this, it would. I could do top and bottom as well. Maybe I'll do top and bottom. I was trying to hide one of the corners behind the bow. That was my idea is hide the corners behind the bow. I think I'm going to do it diagonally. So this has a little, I don't know if you can see a little thing up there. And I do it both ways. I'll take it, my top of my sign facing up, and I just go, I don't know, maybe it's about a quarter of an inch in the corner. Press it down. And then because I don't, it's it's very thin the middle, so you don't really get a scratchy edge to a point you do. So I'll come back the other way and just do that so that this way I don't feel any scratchiness. There, there is a little bit because when you push through the metal, you get a little bit. So that's what I do. But you could do it however you want. I don't know if you can hear it. That's a, you can actually see it standing up there a little bit. So that's why I come back and do it the other way as well. And then there's nothing standing up. It's smooth. That's just me. Just me. Just saying. I got some white. Um, I don't know what gauge this is. This is 22 gauge. First time I'm using it. And I think the white would blend in well. Get the fuzzies out of my clip. This is just a gauging thing. I always wind up cutting too much. I really do. A lot. <laughs> but I do save some of my wire too because sometimes... You just, like if you're doing a floral and you need just a little piece of wire, like I don't have a, what do you call them? Um, oh my God, I just spaced out. The pick machine. I don't have a pick machine. So I sometimes will have to make my own picks and I need a little piece of wire. So um, I'm frugal. Good afternoon too. Welcome, welcome. So I'm frugal sometimes with some of my things. All right, I'm just gonna twist that a few times. Let's do the other side. Little tiny holes. And let's get this up here. I try to get them even. It never works that way. Did you ever notice that? Even on a bow sometimes, you wind up making one loop bigger than the other all the time, even though you measure it out just the same. Okay, so this is our sign. Those of you that are just coming in, this is the wreath base we're making. I'm putting this in. We're gonna do diagonal um, bows on this. So we're gonna put our sign in the middle and we're just gonna thread it right through the mesh, straight down. There is one. Always the fun part is trying to find it on the other end. And especially if you use green. For some reason, the green um, blends in so much that you can't see it if you're doing it on an evergreen. So I'm giving it a light, a light tie because I want to make sure I get this in the center. Oh, let's just push this one down. And I'm just going straight through the mesh, y'all. There's that one. And that one. And then we'll just give it a tie. 
and we'll see if that's where I like my sign. Now, there's two ways also to do this. So you can see you can bring that mesh up through it, up through it, up towards the top of it. Now, because I went through it on um, this one corner down here, now this is gonna have the bow, so it doesn't matter. And this is gonna have a bow up here, so it doesn't matter because that's where the two sides, um, I threaded it. But you can bring your mesh up like that as well. And that way it kinda sinks your sign like into it and makes it a part of it. So it's not just like plopped on top. So I do like that at times. I'll pull these out just a little bit on the sides, this mesh here. See what I did? I pulled it out and made it like a little bow. So look at this one string that keeps coming back to me. All right, so now that I have that, now I can go ahead, I like where it's centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna readjust this one bring it in from the outside one. And then just tie them tight. Just tie, tie, tie. Oops. I like to grab, when I do this, I grab it down here, you can see the two Bs, and I grab it down here and twist tie it. If I try to do it like this, like this, sometimes it's not twist as tight. And it could come out done. And then I'll just take this and just push it around on the wire, on the frame, that is. So let's get this one. And by meaning tight, I want it to sit up against the wreath better. I don't want it to feel like it's going to flop around. So again, I'm just going to twist it up to whatever height I want to do it so that I can twist it around the bar. Those aren't long enough to save for anything. Now, if I feel it like pinching out the wire, I will take a pair of um, my pliers, God, my words today, and I would just hook it around and squeeze it so that it lays flat and that nobody will get cut. My dogs are going crazy because my husband just came home. There we go. Don't pull your mesh, cut it. It's gonna fray, there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, so let's get our bow going. And get that going. So see, that's what it's gonna look like so far. It's gonna look pretty. So, oh, let's use the Easy Bow Maker today. That's my bow of choice. <laughs> Just hang you up there for right now. We know we're going to use these two, but I want to bring in something else with this. Now, I haven't brought in any black yet with it. I do kind of like this one with it. Oops. So this is where I play, because sometimes I'll say, oh, yay, and then I'll go, oh, yuck. So I will sometimes take my ribbons. I mean, we already know these two go together, but it's like, what can I do with this? To give another color, to give another little pop. Now I could do this. I don't have to do all the two and a half inches on the bottom. I can do two and a half, then one and a half, then two and a half. You know, I can alternate it if I want to. Because if I do pink and this together, which looks okay. Um, I 
I don't know. I guess I could do that. I don't want to put these two. Let's play. Let's play. This is how I play. I'll show you how I pay in cushion. I will, before I cut anything, I know I'm probably going to do maybe five or six inch bow. And I will play like this. I will make the bottom. I will take this. Let me turn this around. So you can see. Ooh, my weight. I just hung it up like that. Because I had this styrofoam thing behind it. I will take my bow things just like this and go, and, oh, is that big enough or is that too big? I think it's a little bit too big for it. So that's my first determination. So that was at six inch loops. So we're going to bring it back to five inch loops. Because I think five inch would be better. Or even five and a half. I like to keep them at even numbers. It makes my life easier. All right, so that's five inch. We're gonna do like a funky bow where it has two loops and two tails. But before I do all that, I wanna see how I'm gonna lay this out. So if I do this one on top, I'm gonna bring this at five inches as well. get my loops about the same. I do like these two together. And this is just me playing. So this would be before I cut, if I want to make a decision, if I don't know what I want to do. Now, I think I'm going to put the green one next. And this will be about four inches. Now, in doing this type of bow that I want to do, what I do is I have a tail up, I have a loop, tail, and a loop, okay? So it looks like a big X. The next layer is going to be the opposite. So wherever the tail is, we'll have a loop on top. So this one has a loop, it will have a tail. And the same with the other side, it would be the opposite. Third layer will be the same thing. If it's a loop I finished with, a tail goes on top. If it's a tail, a loop goes on top. So you're just alternating it. We're going to see because I'm not sure if this black with the green is going to be too much or not. That's why I was putting it underneath the other one. I like to mix up my bows like a little bit, you know, bring in what I've used in there a little bit, but bring something else in just to make it fun. And I spread it all out to see if it's going to work or not work. So let me bring this back. And this is something you can do when you're first starting out, if you don't know, and then you can put it up against and see if you like your bow. And this is before you've cut everything. So it makes it easier for you because then it's like, oh, you're not wasting your ribbon if you don't like it. So this is just something I'm showing you. You know, usually I'll have all my ribbon and everything picked out. And I don't mind that cream with the black. So I like my bow. Yay me. <laughs> so now I'm just going to cut everything off. Oops. 
I cut it just a little bit longer than what the loop is, just to make sure I've, you know, if I need to adjust my um, loop in any way, I can. And I'm gonna dovetail them all. Now I can wait till it's in here if I want. I'm the type, usually as I'm doing it, I'll dovetail them. But since, you know, we wanted to make sure on the, the wreath itself, if everything was gonna work, I decided to wait. All right, let's, let's put some zip tie on here. So we're gonna zip tie this. Here's my zip tie. Thread it through. And I'm not gonna zip tie it yet because this is what you can also do. I don't have very much of that pink left that I use. I'm doing this under the table so it's not as loud for you. And what you can do, because this isn't gonna give me much, I'm just gonna cut, um, just randomly cut some of this off. And I'm gonna put it behind the bow so that it makes it stand out. Now, both my bows can be the same size or I can make one bigger than that. See, I don't have any much, I don't have that much left. It's done. So we'll just use all of this that's left. And this way your bow doesn't sink in when you, you know, like pull down into it, which is kind of nice. Okay, so we have that. So before I put my zip tie in, I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna make a ruffle. Just pull it out. I fold it in half and half, overlap it just a little bit. And I'm just gonna crunch it back up just like I did before. So you're gonna get that. Oops, that's my scissors fall. I'm going to take my bow out and I'm just going to slide this down on here. Put my bow back in. And now I'll zip tie it. Oops, I lost my zip tie. I'm not going to pull it all the way tight. Just gonna hold it so it stays stacked. I gotta get a pipe cleaner for behind it. Stick a pipe cleaner behind it. And before I do it, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna hold my thumb down there in the center, kind of as pressure. And I wanna make sure my loops, and remember, we're gonna make this look like an X. So we're gonna have a tail up top, loop down below, another tail below, one up top. So I'm just gonna spread everything out. Oops. Make sure I got everything kind of where I want it. And then when I do, then I'll just go ahead and pull this really tight and cut it off. Here we go. So now it becomes the fluffing and the dovetailing. So I'm gonna pull my bow apart. I always start, for me, I like to start on the bottom for this type of bow to make sure I have opposites and opposites, meaning tail on one side and the loop on the other. Same on the next row. Make sure my loops are the same. And, oops, yep, that goes that way. And just do that. And now I can go back and I can go ahead and dovetail all my edges that I didn't do of the ribbon. And I usually make these about the same length as the loop that it goes with. So that way you see the bow that's underneath it or ribbon underneath it. 
And I want to make them about the, you know, like I said, the same size as the loop of the coordinating. One it is, this one's long. Trim it off a little by little, because you can always go back and trim off more, but don't trim off too much, because then you'll be stuck with a short ribbon, and it won't look good. And then there we have our bow. And of course, you know, when we make bows, it's never going to be perfect <laughs> the way we want it. We'll be like pulling this one here and that one there all day long. And that would be our bow. Ta-da! All right, so now we're going to make the same bow. Ooh, that's going to look pretty. And I think I'm going to keep them the same. Like I said, you can make one bigger, one smaller. I'm going to sit down for this one since I know what I'm making now. I like to stand, like I said, sometimes I'll just stand. But then, you know, your back hurts, your neck hurts, you know. Thank you. Thank you. I try to give you guys little tips and ideas on things. Um... Because sometimes you may not realize it and you hear it from somebody else. You're like, oh, yeah, why didn't I think of that? You know? All right. So we said we were doing the loops here. So now we'll, I'll create the bow with you. So I like to put mine in first and then I'll twist it once it's in here. You can have it up here and you can twist it up here if you want to. I like to wait. So I measured my tail. My tail's a little bit longer than six inches here because, and my loop is at five inches. I put my thumb in there to make sure I'm at five inches because if you don't, sometimes you get that and then it goes over and then you have lopsided bulbs, <laughs> which I sometimes still have. All right, measure out this side, same thing. And now I'll go ahead and cut it. So I'll just pull it back out because I have a little bit of a crease in here where I know my bow should be, but I can measure it again. And now I'm gonna set how I want. I'm gonna put a loop up there, loop goes up top, tail goes up top, and this other loop goes down below. So you have an X, tail, loop, tail, loop. And then we're going to do the opposite with the next color. Let me take my things off of here since I'm using my spool holder here. So I'm going to dovetail this side. And remember I said I was keeping this one the same length. So again, I'm gonna go a little bit past the five. Here's the five. I'm gonna go a little bit past with my dovetail. Now, you can make this one shorter if you want to. I could go five, four, three, two, whatever. But I didn't want that center bell to center part of the bow to be so tiny that when you pull it up, it looks like a little ball in there sometimes. So if I want a nice rounded base, I like to keep the bottoms at the same. Um, to give it more of, here's a whole rounded base. Does that make sense? Rather than this one and then go shorter, shorter, shorter. So it just depends. Sometimes I'll do the one, like I'll do just do the pink at one side. The next one I'll bring in at four inches or something. And that's, it just depends where I am on the design. There's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you feel. All right, so we have a loop up here. So we want to put a tail up there. So again, I'm just going to cut my tail a little bit longer. I'll dovetail it now. Get that out of the way. So it's loop with the tail. Opposite would be loop on top, tail on the bottom. And the same on the other side. We're going to just make it opposites. Make sure your ribbon is twisted so it's flat looking. 
So right now my bow is just like two axes. So let me wind this up because all this ribbon is rolling down onto the floor here. Okay. Next one's the green and the black. All right. Let's do this one. Now this one's going to be shorter. This one's going to be at four inches. So I'm going to make this a little bit longer, almost going to the five on my tail. That's going to go on top of this loop here. Come over with my loop, measure it out to four, twist it halfway, and measure this loop out to four as well. And then cut it again, just a little bit past it, so in case I need to adjust it. Okay, so we ended with the tail here, so a loop goes on top there. We ended with the loop here, so did I say that right? Tail, so a loop, yes. So a loop here we ended, so we put a tail on top, and then the opposites will go down at the other side. So we're just creating layers, a loop, a tail, a loop. Hopefully that works. Hello, my friend. How are you? Welcome, welcome. You're probably on lunch break. <laughs> okay, and we'll put the pink on top. So, yay. All right. And I went in a little smaller on this one. I went in about three inches. Bring this one out just a little bit more on that one. And then I can always cut it. Some people may think you're wasting ribbon by doing that. Yeah, I know. But that's okay. It's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. Just a little bit, y'all. All right. There we go. So we finished with the loop here. So a tail goes there. That means that loop goes down there. We finished with the tail here. So we put the loop up there. And there we go. Gosh, you know when you like a ribbon so much and you start running out of it and then you're like, oh. <laughs> then you gotta water it. Now, what I should have done was put this down first. Whoopsie was sitting right there right in front of me the whole time so again I'm just going to kind of fold it about halfway overlap it crunch it and I'm going to place it down now I'm going to stand put it down put it down here we go zip tie here we come go. Make sure you got your zip tie the right way because it's nothing more frustrating to put your zip tie together and you're like, are trying, why isn't it working? Okay, let's get another pink pipe cleaner. Put it behind. Now I chose pink. I could have done the green to keep it all the same. I just chose pink. Doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom again, fluffing it out. I got my loop here, tail here, so that means a tail goes here and a loop goes over here. And it's the opposite on the next one. And I pull them out. I want to really make that kind of big X feel. on each layer. And then when I got it pretty much looking like an X, pull it tight and cut. 
And now my bow is ready to be really fluffed out. So what I like to do is this. If I have a tail here, the next layer, since it's the same, now see, I'm gonna cut that eventually. I'll do a loop. Then I'm gonna make sure, because it's gonna be like opposites, gonna be like tail loop, tail loop, you know, kind of thing. So I wanna make sure I have all that set in here and just rotate I just rotate everything around make sure it all works and it's basically it's not so much tail loop tail loop but I want to try to get it as opposite colors as I can you know on it so that it and this is on my bottom row. Let me pull it all the way out and I'll show you. So my bottom row is that fuchsia pink and the plaid. So I have pink, plaid, pink, plaid, pink, plaid, pink, plaid. So that's what I want. And then I'll just take this next is the black and I'll just move that around on here. Same with the pink. I see I have one really long tail here. So we'll just give that a little snip off. Just do a little bit and make sure I'm not cutting too much off. And I think the pink one did fine. This one. Just a little bit off this one. There we go. And then we have our second bow. So let's go ahead and put these babies on our wreath. And again, because we made in the same, sometimes you could do a big bow up top and a little one down below, a smaller one. And I didn't cut this tie here. You could even use your pipe cleaners in here if you wanted to. Oh, thank you. I think they came out cute, the colors. Um, you can use your pipe cleaner to go ahead and tie your things in too, your bows. All right. So we're going to thread this right down here through. I'm going to pull it relatively tight just to see. I'm trying not to cover the words. That would be the idea. So my bow, bow may be split, you know, on the corner there. And I'll show you. Let me get both the bows in. Just notice one of my loops was really long on that side. <laughs> All right. Why didn't I cut this one down? Silly me. Forgot one. Forgot two of these. What was I thinking? All right. Put this one up in the corner. Pipe clean has got to be straight in order to do it. Otherwise, it's never going to go through. And then it gets hooked on just one little piece of mesh all the time. There you go. Thread it through the other side. Oops. 
it. So it looks gorgeous. I always bring my fingers up in here. I'll pull it out, but I bring my fingers in to make it poofy this way. Now, when I did this one, let me twist this. Because I have that mesh. There we go. Remember, I put the mesh underneath the bow. So it would, the way, you know, you make it a bow tie. So you have a little gap top and bottom. So I want that gap kind of like on the corner. And I'm pulling more of the mesh to go the other way. Because otherwise it covers up the words. And I didn't want that. our tails are they perfect you know they have to be perfect they're sticking to my sweater because I can't show you something that's not perfect I don't think I'll be honest I don't think anything is perfect but we shall see we shall see. Okay. So that's what it's going to look like. Whoop, whoop. Ta-da. Make sure I got it right side up. So I'm trying to tilt it so you don't get a glare. If you're, if you feel... If I feel this is sticking out too much, I can go behind it and pull it down a little bit. You know, I could spread it out and just pull it down from behind a little bit if I want to. And there you go. Happy Mother's Day. Yay. So that's going to be it. I don't think I'm going to add anything else to it. I'm going to keep it kind of... I want to use the word simple. I don't know. I do have some little pink hearts I could put in here. But then I don't want to make it look too Valentine-y. You know, although you have love for your mom, there's no hearts on here. But I think that came out cute. It's a nice spring kind of looking wreath. Isn't that cute? Yeah. All right, y'all. Thanks for coming in, Nona's Nutty Crafts. I appreciate you. Oh, yeah, thank you. It is super cute. I appreciate y'all stopping in today, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Nona's Nutty Crafts. Bye. Oh, thank you.